Right, so I've made it to Scotland. I just arrived this morning. I am in beautiful Stirling, Scotland. You'll have to bear with me, I'm quite tired. Last night was my last night in Wales, so I had a bit of a late night and then a very early morning to catch my flight to Scotland. I am in Scotland to see where my Scottish family is from. My Scottish ancestor is John Connell White. He's my, he's my great, great grandfather. He was born in Stirling, but he moved to Canada with his parents who were in the dry goods business when he was two. So my Scottish heritage is quite far back. <laughs> um, John Connell White was born August 2nd, 1861. He moved to Canada when he was two, so uh, 1863. I, he carried on his family's dry goods business in Ontario until 1887 when he went to Victoria, British Columbia. He quickly left Victoria for New Westminster to become the superintendent of New Westminster Waterworks, and then became the superintendent for the construction of the Revelstoke and Nacusp Railways. Uh, one of the reasons why I chose to do the history of John Connell White is because when you go that far back, uh, it gets exponentially complicated uh, to figure out who it was that came to Canada. Um, it's quite easy with John Connell White because he, he is a famous British Columbian. He's in uh, History of BC because in 1896 he became the first prison warden of British Columbia. He was the prison warden of New Westminster. Feels a bit strange having an ancestor that was a prison warden. I can't imagine myself <laughs> doing that job. Um, yeah, he um, he was prison warden there. I have, I'm not sure when he finished, but I have recorded in 1905. He was warden of 137 inmates and they were involved in all sorts of manufacturing. Brick, shoes, leather work, um, stone masonry, all sorts of things. Which also makes me feel a bit strange thinking about my ancestor as a sort of, I don't know, it's kind of like almost slave labor in a way. Um, like, yeah, it feels kind of weird. He was also quite into rifles. Um, he was the president of the BC Rifles Association for many years. He was into field sports. He founded the New Westminster Lacrosse Club and competed uh, nationally several times. In 1889, he married a woman named Margaret Robina Blythe in Ottawa and she was from Scottish heritage as well. I'm not sure if their families knew each other beforehand because b both John Connell White's parents and Margaret Rubina's parents were both in the dry goods business and they were all from Scotland. They all immigrated. Uh, Margaret Rubina's parents were from Kennaway near Edinburgh, a bit east of Edinburgh. Uh, I'm not sure if I'll get there on this trip. Um, Stirling's just is quite convenient. So I'm here exploring and I have a lot of information uh, because of John Connell White's history. It's very well recorded, mostly well recorded. They had six children, including my grandfather, John Stewart, um, who married Gladys Spratt. Gladys Spratt, I've been trying to figure out where her family comes from. I've gone several generations and they're quite an old Canadian pioneer family, so um, I'll have to do a bit more research. I, ha I have a sneaking suspicion it might be from Ireland, but yeah, uh, many generations. The Spratt family was in Canada. Um, yeah, so my father's father's family is, as we know, mostly Scottish, and then wherever, um, wherever the Spratts were from. Yeah, so I, I, I'm here at um, Cambuskenneth Abbey. Uh, I have this written down as one of the possibilities of places that my great-great-grandfather was 
baptized. However, it looks like it was uh, demolished by the English. I have a feeling that it wasn't operational to baptize my great-great-grandfather. So I'm going to check out the other location. But in the meantime, we can have a little look. So most of it has been destroyed. This is the old entrance into what used to be the abbey. And then the bell tower has remained. It says that the bell tower was possibly quite useful to use as a lookout, so that's why they kept it. So I have found the church where he was baptized. Um, it's called Logi, Logi Parish, L-O-G-I-E, um, or Logi Kirk. Uh, the only problem is, is that I'm not supposed to be parked here because there's a funeral today. So we're just going to take a quick look at the church um, and then head out. I think that's all the time we have. Okay, bye! So I'm just around the corner from the church where my great, great, great grandparents were married. St. Manius uh, Abbey, Kirk. Choose one. Yep, your pick. Okay, I'll uh, just mosey on over there. I've picked my friend up from Glasgow Airport this morning uh, for our Diceman trip. So we haven't made any plans. Uh, everything is left up to the roll of a dice for a week. Um, and I finished all of my ancestral places yesterday. I didn't have very many to go to because my great great grandfather left when he was two. Um, so I'm at a bit of a loss for ancestral places in Scotland and that's Scotland is essentially my father's uh, father's side of the family <clears throat> I have to say I don't feel very Scottish <laughs> uh, and I feel a bit um, even though I, I'm quite excited about getting on with my trip with my friend. Oh, midges are out already. Uh, I felt quite sad about leaving Wales. I feel, I feel quite connected to Wales and felt like I was understanding what it means to be Welsh. Um, so I suppose I'll just, um, have to say goodbye uh, from Scotland and get on with my visits with my friends for the next couple of weeks and see you in Sweden when I go to Gotland, the island where my mother's mother's family's from. So until, until Sweden, bye!